Hi everyone, this is Carrick with ACG. You know what I've always wanted? I mean, besides that giant battle cat I could name Gunther Featherfall and ride around in my backyard? That's right, a game that mixes Flash Gordon, old Star Trek, and other science fiction from decades ago and then mixes it up with the cheesiness of theater in the park after about the second break where everyone has a couple beers in them. So imagine my surprise when the deadly Tower of Monsters was announced. And... I got a chance to review it. This is a beat em up with a unique twist. It's all a terrible B-movie, and a director walks you through DVD commentary as you go. You're playing a game of a movie within a game within a movie. So let's see how it does, shall we? As always, if you like the video, eh, maybe subscribe. So here is the review for The Deadly Tower of Monsters, Ray Harryhausen fake stop-motion dinosaurs, giant detached monkey hands, and breaking the fourth, fifth, and possibly even the sixth wall within a game. As always, graphics are up first. <laughs> you know, this is one half those hot green chicks James Kirk got space herpes from and the other half a disciplined digital treatise on how to take various source materials and make them work expertly together. The deadly Tower of Monsters absolutely shines, whether it's the old film post-processing that goes throughout the title or the absolutely rock-solid fake stop-motion of the dinosaurs that just want you to get in their bellies as quickly as possible. Or perhaps it's the hilariously dressed space clones later in the game with their spandex stretchy spacesuits. The thing is, the game exudes atmosphere at every level. There's an almost Almost absolute attention to detail here to get those various designs to all work well with one another as their appearance and culture really stretches across many decades but even that is explained quite easily within the game title the frame rate stays rock solid whether you're killing techno lizard cultist or spin staff and Amazon warrior chicks animation is actually very good and while not perfect Malay weapons have unique animations like the laser whip which the director informs you they never train the actor on so when you pick it up you just sit there spinning it uselessly above your head and still luckily take out some enemies with it and that connection between directorial content and foolishly overwrought animations lends an air of authenticity to the entire game like you really are seeing old film footage of a movie somebody created decades ago really when reviewing games honestly I'm rarely this impressed with the title from the get-go but the the moment you're introduced to the game and you see the wires controlling chips and see how lovingly the game handles behind the scenes reality breaks, it's hard not to be amazed, including the physics of these fake items within the game world. This kind of stuff has been done somewhat before, like with Brazen and You're in the Movies, but instead of being in charge of the setup, you're just living vicariously through these characters as they dance around some absolutely gorgeous, massive sprawling levels. These levels are huge. You wouldn't be blamed for feeling like you're playing some kind of mixture of Gauntlet and Pandemonium the moment you turn this title on. I think it's always a good idea to remember that graphics aren't just shiny things flashing in front of your damn face. If it was, all we'd do is just play FMV movies with special effects. Instead, it's the direction of the artistic stylings that drive the overall theme and mood, and in the end, create the composition of the game. Almost flawless in its technical delivery and without any frame rate hitches, I will just say this. Deadly Tower of Monsters looks amazing. Sound, music, and voice. Dr. Peculiar. Yes, your eminence. Release the Mechameleon. But your curses. My father revoked my access to the teleport terminals. I shall only be able to utilize the ones I activate manually. Time vortex device detected. Device in dangerous area. Nuclear and cellular. And sound is up first, of course. Tesla guns lighten up enemies before vaporizing them, flamethrowers toasting mutant ants, and massive battles with space monkeys. Every single sound within the title is handled well with an eye towards nostalgia and towards that old style old science fiction effects. Now, not everything is perfect. Some of the samples can get a little crushed during battle scenes, and there does seem to be the occasional desire for a lot of those sounds to inhabit that middle of the road sound spectrum wise. And this can result in a muddy sound sphere, but it's actually more noticed than noticeable. Music. It's a completely impressive soundtrack. Thick, low-key piano chords with brass introduce massive bad guys that seriously destroy the entire set as you're battling them. And then quickly, you're really surrounded in a blanket of that old-style warbly synth tone as you face a series of robot foes where the music matches what you're seeing. And then you're driven forward by a thumping bass track with flutes along the side, cheerfully reminding you of old-style instrument accompaniments that used to be in science fiction TV shows like this. It's fantastic music, and it fits the theme the 
way a soundtrack needs to. Here, it is a bit in your face compared to other titles, titles that I've brought up in the past, and that does make sense for this type of situation that they're going for, but just a reminder, you will end up noticing this music. And of course, that brings us to voice. Really, whether you're chiding space despots as Dick Starspeed or threatening to tear a level down around the ears of bad guys as the chompy and threatening Scarlet Nova, or even just vaporizing enemies mid cutscene like Robot, each character's voiced well for the world that they inhabit. Dick is a slight mix of James T. Kirk and Perry Roden of classic literature fame, while bits of Scarlet Nova remind me forcibly of a space version of Kate Archer from No One Lives Forever. But it's Robot that just takes the cake for me. The dude barely talks, and the director says that he's a guy in a spacesuit, and so you usually can barely tell what he's saying anyway, but his occasional moments on screen are hilarious, though they are very rare. But even better than that is the outstanding voice work of the bad guys. Rip-offs of Ming the Merciless and later some characters that I can't spoil, they are pitch perfect in their delivery. It's like they exist in a world where they're as foolish as they really look and act, but only we, the gamer, can currently see it. Crazy damned good. And that, of course, brings us to gameplay. So you're almost instantly introduced to the story, a director giving DVD commentary, and as you play, he discusses what's going on on screen, like making one-liners when you die about using the wrong footage, or discussing the difficulties of trying to wrestle pissed off puppies into vacuum cleaners covered in Christmas lights so that they can save money on monsters. For some, the commentary is going to bother them, as it goes over the top on occasion, and there's a lot of it, and sometimes it actually goes over the top of cutscenes. I get it. For me, it was perfect having it there, and if you turn off the voices, all the voices in the game shut off, which allow you to play it in a very old style way, so you could do that. Right at the starting of the game, you're going to be Dick Starspeed, and then in a little bit, you're going to get Scarlet Nova. She's basically the easily recognizable daughter of Ming the Merciless from Flash Gordon. Now, these are your two main characters until you later locate the stunningly imaginatively named Robot, as I said before. Pretty soon, you're slashing, shooting, slicing, slamming, shocking, smashing, and dashing your way up and down the Tower of Monsters, telling the story of the game within the game story. As you adventure, you gain different gears, which are collectibles and can be used to upgrade your array of ranged and melee weapons. You can also upgrade Dick, Scarlet, and Robot with points you gain as you battle your way around the tower. Those statistics increases are things like speed and more damage to range weapons. Gameplay is really where this thing absolutely shines, plain and simple. It's a mixture of pandemonium with that older title's oddly charming 2.5D movement with the world spinning around you as you move across its levels. And then also single player gauntlet with all manner of enemies thrown at you from various science fiction worlds of the past. Now, a game like this has to nail its tropes well, because if it doesn't, much of the humor within it is going to be directed at it and not alongside it. Luckily, regardless if you're being attacked by stop-motion dinosaurs or shooting giant brains flying space saucers, the gameplay shines and shows a respect for the original subject matter and then teases it mercilessly after that. Also, within a short amount of time, you're going to be introduced to a series of items and abilities that really are the cornerstone of this title, like a teleporting system which can move you around the tower, as well as this cool thing, the vertical gun, which has you battling bad guys on levels below you while shooting at the top of their brain pans. Think bird vision while aiming at a freshly washed car and you sort of get the idea, but also the ability to jump and control your descent so much as you descend. Now, all these systems work together to find secret areas or locate hidden loot. Run to the edge of a level, hit a button, and now you're shooting below you you taking out enemies. Then you see some items you want so you can leap off and then grab them. Once you're done, you hit the left bumper button and your sky teleported back from where you jumped off. It's this movement in both the horizontal and vertical plane which pays off in making Deadly Tower of Monsters even more than it originally appears at first glance, and none of them are throwaway situations. This kind of gameplay really does make up the foundation of the title as a whole, and what's funny is you don't even really think about that until you really get deeper into the game. Now, regardless though, for me, it's the absolutely rock solid handling of the subject matter that really elevates the execution here. Every science fiction creature introduced is done so in fantastic fashion, and it's the melding of film history that really makes the title shine, as well as the consistent reminders that, hey, you're in a movie. For example, you aren't just introduced to one fantasy trope or vaguely disguised copy of past cinema delight. Instead, one famous character might be the scientist who introduces you to another recognizable set of characters to fight. It's this integration of imaginations that so solidly works to create that theme for you as the gamer. 
And I think one thing of note, you know, this isn't Ratchet and Clank level weapon reimagination, but there are a couple weapons that are downright enjoyable as hell and super creative. Luckily, the director points those out to you as you get them. Some are based on classics and science fiction that you can probably guess at, while a few will have you scratch your head and just wonder what the hell they were thinking, but they end up being an absolute delight and many times very good, powerful ranged weapons. Just really good gameplay throughout. Fun factor. It's a blast, guys. It nails everything from the look of those old sci-fi shows to the music to the sound effects and around five or six hours. I think that's a really good length for this kind of title. I adored seeing all the different callbacks to times and movies and places I had not been able to experience since the last time I caught a flashback Friday in a black and white TV show. The gameplay is rock solid. It looks gorgeous. And the attention to detail really honestly, when you put it all together, is outstanding. You know, once again, only three weeks into January of 2016, we have another title this one technically also an indie title that absolutely shines with professional polish so as you guys know i rate games on a buy wait for sale rent or never touch it again rating scale this is a buy this is a fantastic entry into the beat em up gauntlet style genre and it's captivating use of various gameplay elements to further extend the playability doesn't seem artificial but instead seems completely natural it's an absolutely must have for this year so that's it for me. I hope you guys like this video. If you did, hit thumbs up, maybe share it. If you didn't, hit thumbs down. And as always, peace out.